Hey guys, it's Zan. I just want to let you know that this review is going to be a little disjointed. It seems like it's going all over the place. The reason for that is that we're trying not to spoil much about the plot. It's a film that you should experience yourself. We will be doing a spoiler review hopefully in the next few weeks, but for right now, here's our spoiler light review of Weathering with You. Hope you guys enjoy. Warning, this podcast contains adult language, mature situations, a determined runaway with great worth ethic, a cheerful sunshine girl with unusual abilities, perpetual rain for over three months, the juiciest Big Mac in the world, and awesome music by Radwimps. Listener discretion is advised. Spark an anime review. Tenki no Ko. Weathering with you. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the Sparkin Anime Review. Sparkin's podcast where we talk about new and old anime, movies, TV shows, OVAs, ONAs, and all other lovely things that are awesome. I'm your host Zan, saying konnichiwa, aloha, bonjourno, and what's up? Hey, it's Greta. So it's been a bit since you've been on the podcast. You've been rather busy with everything going on in the land of real work. Yes. Still watching anime, just busy. busy. Busy, busy. But you're going to be back on movie reviews and other things as well, because there's so many cool things coming out. And I've worked enough. And also, we still have to do the Little Women review. Yes. And other things. But we digress. Uh, this is our first anime review for the far distant year of 2020. 2020. Or it's going to be XXXX. Wait, no. That sounds 4Xs will be 40. So it'll be 2... 2X. Two, no, it'll be 2M... XX? Somebody put that in the comments. What is it supposed to be for it to be 2020? Thank you. This is not a random question. This is just what we're curious about. But we digress. Uh, yeah, it's our first anime review, and I'm excited because this is one which technically came out last year, and for various reasons, we... Uh, well, anyway, beforehand, if you're joining us for the first time, you're probably confused what we're talking about. Let's get that out of the way first. So, if you're joining us for the first time, Spirekin is a podcast that provides informative reviews about connected enhanced narratives. Now, what does that mean? Pretty much it means that every episode we talk about different geeky properties. Since this is the anime review, obviously we talk about anime, how the art style is, the sound, the acting, the overarching plot, and if it's worth investing your time in or not. You have to agree with anything that we say, but we try to be educational, enlightening, exciting, and most importantly, entertaining. And where can they find our old episodes for our manga review or anime review or con review and all those other lovely podcasts? www.spirakin.com Yes. They'll find everything. Yes. You everything. Yes. We're also on Instagram, Twitter, Tumblr, Apple Podcasts, Apple iTunes, Stitcher, YouTube, and various other social media sites. Just write Spirakin, S-P-I-R-A-K-N, and you'll find us. Also, definitely follow us on Instagram, follow us on Twitter, and if you want to be cool, go to tinyurl.com forward slash help Zan and leave a note in the Apple uh, podcast site. Leave a nice little comment for us. It's kind of a nice little, just like putting a tip in the tip jar. It gives me a little bit of a, what is the word? It gives me it makes gives me hope to keep going with this podcast a little longer. Reviews the, reinvigorates the mojo. Yes, it, it reinvigorates and strengthens it. But now that we've gotten all of that crap out of the way, let's get to it because I'm actually excited to talk about this anime we saw because we saw this anime not on tv we saw it in theaters yes we actually got to sit down in theaters sit and scrunch and watch an anime actually this is the second anime in the last two months we've watched in theaters yes uh greta and i finally got to well greta finally got to watch promare yes i did with the dub uh did you like it i did i'm not a huge fan and i think i said that i wasn't a huge fan of fire force yeah. So this is like a better version of Fire Force. So I don't want to be sexist, but it feels more like a boy anime. Totally. Well, what do you think about the world's biggest idiot firefighter? Yeah. He was amazing. But that's not the anime we're talking about. Uh-uh. No, we're talking about... We're watching... About... We watched Weathering With You. Yes, Tenki no Ko, which is the 11th film by Makoto Shinkai. Also, the second film he worked on with the band Radwimps. He actually said that he emailed them, they wrote a song, and then from there he wrote the story, which is kind of cool. It's not kind of cool. It's super cool. And it's a fun fact that this came out in theaters and our theater was packed. 
Yeah, we went with another friend who couldn't even sit next to us. Yeah, we went with a friend of the podcast, Doug, like I said in uh, this week's earlier anime review or manga review. And we talked about we We had to sit in two completely different spots. It wasn't next to each other. We were across the, the theater. It's kind of crazy. It was that packed. But it was cool. and everyone That was just means I didn't have to share my popcorn. Doug, we love you. So, entering this part now, this is actually a couple days later, turns out that this got number two in the box office. Woohoo! It beat out Dr. Doolittle for... Okay. Well, it beat out Dr. Doolittle. It beat out Little Woman. It beat out... Uh, so the only thing it did not beat out was Bad Boys. That's crazy. In the United States, Weathering With You is the number two... because it was awesome. It's an awesome movie. Okay. Well, going back to the old review... But it's a film which is unique and different now. As we said, the title is Weathering With You or Tenki no Ko, which literally means Child of Weather. It was directed by Makoto Shinkai and produced by Genki Kawamura and written by, obviously, Makoto Shinkai. Or Makoto Shinkai, depending on how you want to say it. Uh, the film originally was released in uh, July of 2019 by Toho. And they actually premiered it at Anime NYC. I was debating about going to see it, except the line was longer than the Javits Center whole, so we ended up watching the Loop in the Third uh, movie, which I kind of liked a little better. It's a, the special, but still. Yeah, but you love Lupin. Yeah, my loop Lupin figures are kind of crazy, but I I want to see this. Um, the original box office for this was fourteen point oh four billion yen. Worldwide, it's made one hundred and eighty two point one million. So this movie is doing very good. Now, this is coming off of the um, back burner of his last film, like we said, that he worked with um, the Radwimps. Your Name came out in 2017, and Your Name, or Kimi no Wa, is a film that is dear to my heart. It's a great love story that has such a... It's a little bit sad for a lot of it. But it has a unique twist because it's a body-swapping love story. That's right. You heard it right. Body swapping love story. It's unique and kind of cool and very sweet. Kind of, what is the one with um, the boathouse? The, the lake house. house. The it's lake very house. similar to lake house. With the, uh, there are two different time periods. I got to say that was well done. And this is a film which takes a lot of inspiration to it. Like, that's a very beautiful film. Very pretty film. However, that was him honing his craft, I think. And this is him, he's now got the craft down pat. So he has the system down pat. Because this film is visually stunning. Um, like most Makoto Shinkai films, he focuses on five big elements. The clouds, that's a big deal in this film especially. Uh, uh, the city itself, trains. Uh, there's not a lot of cherry blossoms in this one because it's raining all the time. But there's a lot of rain. There's, rain. There's so much water in this. The clouds, rain. And it's photorealistic. A lot of it looks like real raindrops. And I love that. It looked like it was just... It's either a, um, an animator's nightmare or absolute dream. Very true. It was done so well. but it was also didn't he say that each like raindrop had to be drawn by hand? No, the whole thing was done by hand. Yeah. Which is awesome. It's a show... Shows how great Shingai is because he does it by hand. And I love that. Now, um, we've been talking about the overall, you know, how it's connected to your name, how it's the successor to your name. It's Makoto Shinkai's new film. He's worked on so much. But we haven't really gotten into what this film is about. So, to break this down into one sentence, a, a runaway goes to Japan to kind of find his life together and get away from where he's from. And he meets a girl who has a mysterious ability and they end up going into business together and hijinks ensue mm -hmm. and there may be repercussions because of use of this ability and we don't know what happens and they end up learning about each other that's the dime store one two three have you ever heard of a sunshine girl before uh, i've heard of it because of the little um i heard about it and i feel like i've like yeah, I knew about it somewhere in the back of my brain. Um, but I thought that was a really sweet touch. She's a sunshine girl. And it's uh, sunshine girls are kind of cool. And it's I love the fact that it's connected with that whole um, 
Teru Teru Bozo thing now. Those are those little handmade dolls that people make. It's like with tissues or with cloth, and they look kind of like ghosts. Mm-hmm. And they're they're prayers for rain if you want to have a rain. It's kind of cool because they're a prominent part in this film, except they're doing the reverse because her thing is she is a sunshine girl. So when she's around, sunshine happens. And this is important because something we didn't say is that, all right, this takes place in a world where for some reason, we don't know why, it's perpetually raining in Tokyo. Like it hasn't stopped raining for three months and it's it hasn't flooded yet, but it's, a little... But I mean, like, three months of straight rain. Not like a little misting or a rain shower today and then it clears up like it's raining. Yeah, and it seems to be rough. And she, when she comes in, she actually will... She gets there, she makes a prayer, and suddenly... Stop. The sun comes out. It's and this is one of my favorite things when it rains. But when the when it's raining and you can kind of see far out, you can see all of the rain kind of coming. Sometimes you can see wind kind of blowing through it a little bit, um, almost like a school of fish kind of effect. But when the sun opens up and shoots through like a hole in the cloud, and you get like a spotlight of non-rain, of sunlight, like you see that come streaming in and open up and the rain stops and people, I just, it's really, I like it. That's true. And that's how you feel when you see it. It's just, it's a nice touch. And it's so weird because our main character, whose name is uh, Hodaka, is kind of shocked when he discovers this girl because he met her earlier when he was kind of being homeless because he was he ran away he's looking for his fortune he's living in a manga cafe until he runs out of money that he's being a bum and he's just chilling out in a mcdonald's and you see her because he's working there she gives him a big mac it says here uh, don't worry about it and the big mac when you see it it is the juiciest most you know how a big mac comes in like that square box you like unhinge it and it like cushioned up like they had to squish it kind of to get it to close and they say that the most wonderful seasoning is hunger. And he's starving. He's like drinking water to fill his stomach. He's just trying not to spend money and literally homeless in, in Tokyo. And this is like the best looking He burger. says this is the best meal he's had in his life, which also could deal with what's going on with what he's running away from, which we never do find out about. They never go into that. I kind of do like that they don't explain that it just it happens Mm -hmm. however he's run away they meet and he's and it's like they keep meeting and eventually they end up working together because she is looking for work she ends up getting fired from mcdonald's for some reason because apparently she lied about something and because she doesn't have all her paperwork she lied about her age she's not old enough to work no she is she's 18 years old that's true next month yeah, she's yeah, she's eighteen next month, and uh, so she got fired for that. She's looking for work. Uh, she ends up first. She tries working with a guy who's kind of scrupulous, maybe Yakuza, and um, Hodaka ends up rescuing her, thinking he's rescuing her, and it kind of backfires. But it's a scene which leads to a lot more later on because the Yakuza who's trying to take Hina, the girl, earlier on beat the hell out of Hodaka because he was. Like we said, he's homeless, so he's kind of hiding from the rain underneath the this guy's stoop, and he beats the hell out of him, throws him in a garbage can, and this leads to a MacGuffin, which le- later on leads to problems. One of the problems. Right? Yes. But... But he also beats him up because he's just a piece of... A piece of shit. Yeah. Garbage. Not our hero, the bad guy. The bad guy. But, uh, so, he starts his business with Hina and her little brother, Nagi. And they, it's kind of funny because Nagi is wearing a giant Tero Tero Bozo outfit. She has an umbrella with a ter- Which is so, can we just say how cute he is in that little outfit? He's so cute. Takes a little head off and he's oh, like, he's so working. Also, Nagi is a pimp. He has girlfriends upon girlfriends, and he's, like, seven. Yeah, like, rewind. When we first meet him, our Hodaka is on the train, 
And in the back of the bus is this cute little, you know, elementary school boy riding the bus with a girl that's flirting and they're like all cute. He thinks, oh, that's nice. The bus stops. The girl gets off and a, you know, on the back of the bus and a girl comes on the front of the bus. She goes, oh, hi, I didn't know you were going to be on. And he starts flirting with her and he even says to himself, oh my gosh, look at this, this player. Yeah. And this comes in later on because he has so many girlfriends. It's one of the nice touches that makes each of these characters very different and diverse. Uh, another character that we're introduced to is, uh, how do you pronounce his name? Suga. And Suga is this writer who's played by Lee Pace. Yes, Ronan the Accuser from Guardians of the Galaxy is in an anime. And he hires Horoka for reasons. We don't know if it's because he reminds him of himself because when he was younger he ran away. They're kind of mirror images of each other. Like, I think Suga is what Hodaka could be. Even though he's not a great example of it because he's an alcoholic and he's also living in a bar and he's trying to fight for his daughters, uh, for his visitation rights for his daughter. He also runs a publishing company that Hodaka ends up working for that's, uh, what's the word we're looking for? Um... Kind of entertaining yes like, it's not hard hitting it's folk it's 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 like folklore it's like the the um it's filler stuff it's we yeah. need an article about something like an alligator eating a man we go to this guy and he's writing a, a piece about the sunshine girls and that's where we find out more about the sunshine girl and the history like a tabloid it. yes exactly it's a tabloid and they sell articles there's also Natsumi, who is his niece, who is a crazy girl on a moped who's classy looking for work. That's the running gag of the movie. She's just She's always to... interviewing. Yes, and it's going interesting. <laughs> so you have a nice, round, well-rounded cast of characters who show up. And also, fun fact, there's a grandma in this. She is voiced by Rita Repulsa from Power Rangers. And she's so sweet. She's what you want a grandma to be. Yes. Also, one other thing. Certain characters from your name show up in this in very, like, they're like Easter eggs. And it's funny when you see them. You're like, I know them. See if you can find them and leave notes in the comments. Yeah. Did you find the, 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 the characters from the cameos from your name? I hope it becomes like the star system for Tezuka and they show up. Over and over and over again. So, besides these characters, besides the origin plot... um. What else is there to talk about? The soundtrack. Uh, Radwimps knock it out of the park because they're amazing. They have a great sound to them. And just like your name, this is a soundtrack which you want to keep. Which we have. Yes, we have the soundtrack. Uh, but, but, it, uh, but it is, and it's everything you want out of a rainy, cool soundtrack. It's very, like, 90s, kind of chill in the air. Like you looking out the window with it raining hard, with good music on in the background. Like there's a moment. It fits. Like there's one scene. Uh, one of the soundtracks is called Celebration. It's when they start making money, and they're actually like, they're selling it to different people. And the scene is they're just going to place to place, making it n not rain. It's like, oh, they're hired because they want to. This the person little... wants their wedding to be perfect. These... It's like a it's a montage of it, like over and over and over again. And it's cute because there's incredibly wealthy people for the weddings and then there's like these little kids that want sports day to go off well so they pay like five yen which is all that they can you know which is big money for little kids and the music fits it so well then the next scene is they the the last of their big jobs before their last one is a fireworks festival and well one the fireworks half the cg is terrible in that i don't care what anyone says it's really bad cg it looks really oh i the, thought it was cool. but the scene is really it just despite the cg of the fireworks the scene is great it's just them you know enjoying the moment and the sound is triumphant and great now like most um makoto shinkai series you have it's dealing with uh separation a lot of times it's this not forbidden romance, but it's a romance that's separated by time, space, uh, circumstances. And this one has that element to it. We're not going to spoil about it, but oh, however... It's good. Go watch it. It has a point in it where 
something happens, which some people are complaining about, saying it's really irresponsible. The statement is irresponsible. It's a bad point because it's something which is just... Uh, but it's not. It's the sweetest, most beautiful, most honest and scary thing to say out loud. And uh, it's a it's a decision which is uh, the reverse. It's the reverse of the needs of. It's the, a little bit selfish. Yes, it's the, what I'm saying is it's the reverse of the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. This is the needs of the few are more important than the needs of the many. And I choose to look at it as. Love is worth it. I have to admit, the scene is the be- one of the best scenes I've seen. Now, compared to your name, this film is not as... Sad. No, it's not as polished. I think your name is the better movie. Oh, I... I think your name is the better movie. However, however that scene is better than your name. That one scene is just... It's just as good as your name. They're both excellent movies. Ones that you should own. This is one you should buy. Definitely. This is a... To, for our rating, this is a really, really, really fucking cool. If, oh, yes. Ha- if hands you don't, down. If you don't buy this when it comes you out... You at least need to go watch it. Yes. Go to the theaters. Go check it out. Make sure this train keeps running. Make sh- make your best friend buy it and then just borrow it from them. No, don't put... No, you should and buy it. No, return you, it. No, that's if it's... No, this one you should invest in. You should buy yes. it and buy copies to give to your friends. Yes. This you're is right. this is this generation's red line. This is one you should have to hand to people. This is a, a film you can show to non anime fans and I think they'll appreciate it. Well, <sighs> except for the like we said, the negative part, which is Yeah. A bigger deal for some people. I didn't walk away feeling that that was such a huge thing. I it's like world changing, but I think it's beautiful and life changes and you evolve and a meteorite might hit the earth and then you, your town moves and blah, 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 blah. I, I like it. No, I enjoy the, the romantic me. nature of it. However, a lot of, uh, in interviews, fans of it admitted it like older fans hate, hate that scene. They hate the, the overarching message. I think it's too, it, the, Characters are horrible. I don't think people are opinionated. I think these characters are all are very nuanced and intriguing. I think the film is well done. And if you have a chance, watch it. Check it out. Yes. Um. Anyway, I think that's it. We talked about this. I know we went all over the place like a roadmap, but trying not to spoil it. Yeah, we're trying not to to go into it too far. Go see it. Bring your friends. Leave us comments. And let us know what you guys think. So, uh, our next anime review we're going to be doing is we're doing our sp- our winter 2020 animes because we're almost done with them. The only ones we have let to see are Dor- Dorohitero and um, that one which is really porny on Funimation where it's those three perverts. Yeah. Yay. Also, Izakai Quartet with Raftalia hmm. and Philo. Philo. And then, of course, we have Somal- more Somalia, though, but we're going to go over that next time. So, anyway, with that in mind, um, I'm Greta. And I'm Zan. We're Gonsville. Catch you guys next time. Watch more anime. And we'll see you soon.
せる心が夏をさらに早送るよ目まぐるしい景色の中君だけが止まって見えた君と出会ったあの日からばたりと夜夢はやんだよ土の中で待ち焦がれた Go.